But also the world we live in is an awful lot like a room full of mirrors in that there's all sorts of projections going on. And it's a very weird and arbitrary place, human life. And things which are popular have somehow caught the attention of the masses. Hi, the other day I was talking about uh, taking charge of your life. How do we take charge of life? How do you make the most of life? And I spoke more or less in a kind of big picture way. I talked about immersion and really looking at the principles of the law of attraction, how we immerse ourselves into the life that we want to lead. So if you want to say, for example, become an artist, you have to start hanging around with artists and, and changing your narrative. Your narrative creates your reality. The things that you think about, the things you talk about, the atmosphere that's around you, the places you visit, the activities you're involved in, all create a narrative. And, you know, what it's hard for people to understand is that um, we want something to be different, so we hope for something different, but we do the same thing. But the real thing that's going to change us is we have to already start doing the different thing. We have to do that different thing and the reality will come. So we have to begin with faith and then action and then manifestation. That's basically the direction we have to go in. Now, I was given a kind of big picture view. So I was thinking again about this from maybe a smaller point of view. So the big picture view is how do you take charge of your life? The kind of philosophical aspects of it, the immersion idea. Uh, which is a practical way of using the law of attraction. But also, we could say, how do I take control of my life? What's the practical things? Okay, I want to become, say I want to become an author. So I have to start doing author courses and, and practicing reading and, and joining communities and practicing my writing and I have to do all this sort of stuff. But on a, on a practical level, that's one thing, that's a kind of big picture view. What's a small picture view of taking control of your life, okay? So the small picture view of taking control of your life is you have to begin with the concept that you are an agent of change in this world and that you are an agent of change in your life, okay? That's the basis that we have to work from. So we have to build from ourselves as the center and we have to build around that, all right? So we begin with self-reflection. We begin by finding out about who we are and what we are and what we need to be in daily life. And the big challenge that people have in daily life is that it's like we're living in a hall of mirrors. I remember when I was a kid, one of the most popular movies I used to like watching, was very big when I was a kid, was Bruce Lee. And uh, he had this famous movie called Enter the Dragon. Uh, if you haven't watched it, watched it, but there's a great scene at the end of Enter the Dragon where uh, Bruce Lee is chasing after the, the evil guy, okay, and uh, the protagonist, sorry, the antagonist, and he enters a, a room full of mirrors and he can't find the guy. And the guy is using this very cleverly because by using a room full of mirrors, he knows that Bruce Lee is a better martial artist than him, but he's trying to confuse him because this, this is his lair and he understands it. And I always find that scene very fascinating, but also the world we live in is an awful lot like a room full of mirrors in that there's all sorts of projections going on. And it's a very weird and arbitrary place, human life. And things which are popular have somehow caught the attention of the masses. And that's really how uh, they have become popular. But we have to go beyond. The mirror is the projection. The projected image, projected in society of this is how you should lead your life. We have to go beyond this projection and find out what we want. And this is the single biggest challenge to taking control of your life because you can make your life anything you want it to be, but do you want that life? And that's the big question we have to ask ourselves. Is this the life that we want? What life do we want? Because you're being sold all the time marketing. So things like 
having a house, having a car. The, you go into the bank and you see the smiley picture, the mom, the dad, and the two kids, and the grandparents. And everybody's smiley and happy and not all that old looking either. And nobody's any disabilities or any problems, okay? The kids are like idealistic 10 look, ten year old kids, not teenagers that are irritating. The mom and dad are not 55 years of age and kind of health problems. No, they're 40 and very healthy, or 35. And even the grandparents are pretty 55, very healthy and vital. So it's not even a realistic presentation, it's an image. And so we're continually so we're continually bombarded by images which aren't really who we are. I'll give you an example of it. Uh, once upon a time I went for a job, I used to work in sales, and uh, we had this very big process of all sorts of psychological assessments. And at the end of the day, I had an interview with the CEO, and he was saying, you should be in academia, you should be in sales. And I thought it was very shocking at the time. And uh, these days now, I do work in academia. I do teach as a day job. But for me at the time, it was a crazy idea. So I was pursuing a lifestyle which was about trying to make more money, trying to be successful, because I didn't know what I wanted. I was just trying to follow success that was generic, not my success. And this is a key thing. As long as you're trying to find somebody else's success, it's going to be difficult. You're going to find it hard to get success. And even if you get success, it's going to feel very hollow. So with reflection, we have to find out what's my heart's desire. And so I would say this idea of false desires, desires which are just sold to you, you bought into a society or culture or whatever, and then heart's desire that each person comes into the earth with a certain destiny, with a certain ability, with a certain unique personality, regardless of age, and certain desires which are in accordance with their unique identity. And these desires are the ones that you need to satisfy. These are the desires which you need to fulfill. So <clears throat> we have to reflect. If you want to take control of your life, you have to reflect upon yourself and start unearthing what these desires are. And it could be difficult, you know, this thing of diary writing and soul searching and maybe doing self-help groups and stuff like that and reading books and thinking about things and trying to think and all this stuff. It could well, you could find it quite challenging, but that's the beginning. One of the aspects I like to talk about is the concept of life story. Because you see, the most important thing here is narrative, okay? Human beings are living in a linguist linguistical structure, right? What I mean by that is, uh, there's a great psychoanalyst called Jacques Lacan, okay? And he has this idea of different symbolic realms and so on and so forth. So he talks about the symbolic, the real, and the imaginary. The real is what's actually there, but we don't live in the real. The imaginary is this world of fantasies and mirror images, and the symbolic is the linguistical order, okay? So what makes us happy is when we're living metaphorically. So when we read a really good book or watch a really good movie, we get carried away to like a different world, a world with lots of metaphorical meaning. When we uh, have a great conversation with somebody, a really deep conversation that feels satisfying, or we maybe trek up a mountain on a holiday, something amazing like that, and we feel a contact with something higher, something more transcendent, we're actually in contact with the symbolic order because the real is just your physical body, just physically here, and raw, unprocessed sensory information. You can't live in it. What makes the difference between a human being and an ape, for example? Okay, apes are very similar to human beings. Some people think that if you give them a vice box, uh, they would create society, but it's not quite that simple. If you were able to give, because the idea is that if they could speak, they could form a language. But the reality is, it's not that they have a voice box that would make them humanoid-like. It's that if they could speak, they would start entering the symbolic realm. So the symbolic realm is almost like a, a virtual reality, but it's a virtual reality of a higher order. So let's think, for example, of God is part of symbolic order. Okay, uh, truth, justice, love. Another concept might be, say, Plato and his, his, his idea of the world of forms and perfect things. Uh, Carl Gustav Jung and his collective subconscious, his idea of archetypes. So again, in the symbolic realm, they're all there. Now we could get very spiritual about it or even religious about it and say that 
because God exists. If you believe in God, I'm not going to suggest that God exists or doesn't. You have to make your own choice about that. But if you are a religious person or a spiritual minded person, you might think in terms of, well, because God exists, there is a God template. And everything in this world and everything in the universe kind of follows this God template. And whether God exists or not, and again, I'm not going to tell you whether God does exist or not, it's your choice. Whatever the case is, the symbolic does exist. The symbolic seems to exist beyond, beyond our earthly concepts. Okay, But all you need to know from the point of view of leading a happy and successful life is aligning yourself with the symbolic order because who you are, your identity, is within that symbolic order. The unique you, which your unique heart's desires, are within that symbolic order. Happiness for you is in that symbolic order. So what we have to do is find out who we really are. Not the small I, but the big I. The real me, who I am and why I came to this earth. So we do this by reflecting. We do this by working through our issues, overcoming our traumas and soul searching and asking for guidance from within from whether it's God or my higher self or more, you know, whatever it is, some higher power, okay? Something transcendent of my personality. I ask that something bigger to help me and guide me. And when we do this over a period of time, I can't tell you how long it's going to take you. It's a journey. It could take months, it could take years. But over a period of time, you will start finding out what really matters to you. Now, what's this got to do with controlling your life? What's got to do with controlling your life on a practical everyday level is understanding what you want to do. What I said in the other video of take charge of your life is immerse yourself in the life you want. But first of all, you need to know what life you want. And to know what life you want, you need to learn a little bit about who you really are and what you really want. Okay? So taking control of your life, the first place is to take control of yourself and learn about yourself and who you are. And you might say, well, that could take a long time. It's okay. The fact is, the moment you start making some efforts on this road of self-discovery, your decisions will already be better. Your decisions will already improve. And with that, it will become easier to take charge of your life because you'll start making more sensible decisions, like trying to pursue the right career, trying to live in the right country, trying to have the life, right lifestyle for you. Stuff like that will actually start taking place in your life. So that's what I would say, if you want to really take control of your life, start learning about yourself. And as you get little nuggets of knowledge, try and work out, is this the direction I should go in? And then you try all the immersion techniques that I was talking about in the other video, which is called the charge of your life. But that's it in a nutshell. To take control of your life, you need to find out what direction to go in, okay? If you're going to hop in your car tomorrow and go to a different city, first of all, you need to know what city, and then you need to follow the immersion techniques of, I need to find a map, I need to think of holiday destinations and tourism resorts and all this stuff, and my itinerary, okay? So the immersion stuff atop it, you do videos like the itinerary, and this one about taking control of your life is the direction, and you'll find the direction by looking inside your heart and find out what you really want to do with your life. Okay? Think about that. I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe. I'll talk to you next time.